Jimmy Durante left his nose, Betty Grable left her legs, and Monday, hundreds of screaming fans were on hand as actor Mel Gibson left his hands in Hollywood. He put his hands and footprints in cement at Man's Chinese Theater. The event timed to coincide with t tomorrow's opening of Gibson's new film, The Man Without a Face. Gibson in 1993. Two years later came the kind of big screen costume epic that most actors can only dream about. Braveheart, produced and directed by Mel Gibson and starring Mel Gibson as 13th century Scottish hero William Wallace. Here are Scotland's terms. Lower your flags and march straight back to England, stopping at every home you pass by to beg forgiveness for a hundred years of theft, rape and murder. Do that, and your men shall live. Do it not, and every one of you will die today. So how do you do this, talking about tactics, as a director? You don't actually have a toy soldier for every actor you have, do you? Oh, no, you just have, like, representative groups. Um, we had on the day uh, 2,000 uh, guys from the Irish Army sort of running around in war paint, but... Um, you know, we didn't. No, you just have a, a gang of soldiers to say this is a block of soldiers, and uh, you know you plan and plan camera angles, and from there you get a shot list, storyboards, the whole works. Take me through this. Let's assume I'm one of the extras. Mm -hmm. Okay, I sign up for the Irish Army, and I want to mm -hmm. be in in your movie. I show up for work on a Tuesday morning. What do I have to go through? You go into this big tent where they sort of give you something to eat, something to drink, you know, and they all do all that other stuff they have to do beforehand. And then they get wigged. Oh, so I get in a line for a wig, I get a wig. Yep. Uh, they put something like a kilt. Okay, and they, I get a uh, costume. Yep. Then they give you, like, you can take a pick of whatever you want, like a pick or a shovel or an axe. Okay, or a... I grab an axe. Okay. Uh, after that, then they then you go to the makeup department, which is usually just a bucket of mud. Okay, they throw a little mud on my face. Sure, get dirty, look funky. Okay. And uh, march over the hill. All right, now, now I get to the hill. Okay. My director, Mel Gibson, comes up and says, Okay, you're going to run on out there, we're going to have a battle. Okay. You don't want me swinging this axe. Sure, but the first thing I tell you is, I run up and down with a bullhorn and I say, Remember the S word. What's the S word? And everybody chimes in, Safety. And I say, Safety. Don't hurt each other. Safety, safety, safety. We pump it into them every hour. I said, If anybody hurts one another, we'll kill them. So these big battle scenes were actually closely choreographed. Oh, extremely precise. Precision. For, the, for safety. Yeah. Did you wind up getting exactly what you wanted to on that, and, 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 and how difficult a feat was that? I mean, for example, for a battle on scene that would last for 10 minutes, how, how much time are we talking about investing actually in front of the camera? Oh, three weeks. Really? Mm. But it's meant to be a story of, of fictional lore, isn't it? Well, these people occur in history all the time. In every decade, in every country, they... They're the kind of people who have that strength of character that says that a belief is more important even than their life. Die. Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live. At least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to train all the days from this day to that? For one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! This seems the kind of film that, that a lot of guys would, would, would pay you to play. I mean, you get to be a swashbuckling hero mm -hmm. who, who does things for love of country and woman, mm -hmm. and he achieves hero status and eventually martyr status. Mm -hmm. Was it as much fun to play as it looked? I had, I had a great deal of fun, yeah. It was very physical. You could get very tired at times because you're running around a lot, but uh, hey, I figure I'm not ready for the Geritol yet, you know, so I'll keep going. How much of the off. physical did you actually wind up doing? Quite a bit. I mean, I've got a great stunt, a wonderful stunt team. Uh, safety first is their rule. And I'm proud to say no people or animals got hurt. Absolutely nothing. Nobody got hurt? No way. Come on. I mean, remember, I, I watched the film. There are thousands of guys out there. They're running around with, with, with knives, clubs, mm -hmm. hatchets, For axes. Anything you can get your hands on. Yeah, sticks, anything you can rocks. get your hands on. Um, it, it looks good. I mean, it looks bad. It looks dangerous. But no one got hurt. Not even any minor cuts, scrapes? Oh, sure. You mean you get the odd bruise or something. That, I mean, a horse step. But on nobody gets sliced. Day, but no, no, nothing serious. <laughs>
On this episode of Time and Again, we've been visiting with Kevin Costner, Harrison Ford, and Mel Gibson. And maybe you've been thinking to yourself, hey, this movie star deal isn't so hard. Just show up, look good, and collect a big, fat paycheck. Well, being an action hero is not that easy. The, the flying inside the Thunderdome reminded me of an insect on the end of a rubber band being sort of slammed around, but inside a cage. Um, it sort of spear gun rubbers hooked into the hips on a harness with a steel cable going over a pulley inside a big cage with airlifts on it. So it was a three to one ratio when they'd hit the airlift, it'd go three feet, you'd go nine. And if they hit it six, you'd go 18. So it, is, uh, it was fun. It was hard work. Do you hear that, America? It's hard work being Mel Gibson or Harrison Ford or Kevin Costner. We're just glad they're up to the job. That's time and again for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Pauley, and we're history.